Welcome to PMU Nursing School. I'm your host, Nurse Tracy, from Ink Darch's Permanent Makeup in Vermont. This first lesson, A Pain in the Cane, is all about topical anesthetics. I find that permanent makeup artists all have a varied background and not everybody has the same level and length of training. And not everybody is as confident in speaking about topical anesthetics with their clients as others. And it's important that we're able to do so. That being said, during the creation of this lesson, even I learned a few things. So let's dive right in. Like I said, I am Nurse Tracy, and I have been a registered nurse for 12 years, starting in labor and delivery, but I became burnt out and wanted to begin my own business, especially after having my own microblading experience. So I became internationally and domestically trained in microblading and microshading, and have now completed pre areola, permanent eyeliner, and lip blush training as well. In this lesson, we're going to discuss how numbing agents work, the different types of topical numbing agents, how you know these numbing agents are working, side effects of numbing agents, any allergic reactions the client may experience, contraindications to numbing use. And we're going to begin by talking about how anesthetics block pain receptors in the nerves, usually by blocking sodium's ability to enter the skin cell. It does this using primary anesthetics topically before the skin is opened or internally which is secondary numbing after the skin has been opened. Topical anesthetics can often have more than one type of numbing agent, and they are combined because different numbing agents work better for different people, so when you combine them, you usually get greater effectiveness. Now, don't be tricked because different combinations of numbing agents are used by different brands, so just because one type of brand uses the same blend as a primary numbing agent. It may be used by another label as a secondary numbing agent. So make sure you are checking with the manufacturer and applying the right numbing agent at the right time in the permanent makeup procedure. Let's start with lidocaine. Lidocaine is one of the most inexpensive, inexpensive topical anesthetics on the market and it's available in up to 5% concentrations because if you go any higher, it can cause a deadly heart palpitation that is not something we want in a client and you should only apply it up to three to four times during the procedure because if the client gets slurred speech or flushed then it's a sign they're having a reaction and you need to discontinue use immediately. Now often you will see lidocaine used in combination like TAG 45 with epinephrine, but we will talk more about epinephrine later on. Benzocaine is especially good for use around the mucous membranes, and it is strong, up to 20% concentrations, which is why it shouldn't be used in children under two. That shouldn't apply to us in permanent makeup procedures, but we should also think about using the smallest amount possible because it is such a high concentration, and we shouldn't cover the site with plastic wrap because it can increase the warmth of the site and increase absorption speed. And we don't want the client to get these adverse reactions like we just talked about, flushing and slurred speech, that may need us to discontinue the permanent makeup procedure if we don't use benzocaine correctly. Prilocaine is available in 2.5% concentrations and is most commonly an injectable. They will often mix lidocaine and prilocaine together as a topical numbing agent, but you shouldn't use that around the eyes, nose, or mouth, which are mucous membranes, and that's because it is rapidly absorbed, and again, we don't want to have the systemic toxicity, like a cardiac arrhythmia or deadly heart palpitation. We want to keep our clients safe and know how to properly use these topical numbing agents. Tetracaine is one of the most effective topical numbing agents and it's found in 0.5 to 2% concentrations and it lasts longer than lidocaine and cocaine. Back in the day, cocaine was actually a popular numbing agent and it worked well to numb mucous membranes like the mouth, nose, and throat. It is especially beneficial because it increased the heart rate, whereas opioids decrease the heart rate. And tetracaine is used for things like minor, minor skin irritations like sunburn and rash. And adverse reactions could be itching or increased redness or blistering, which is a severe reaction. The most popular numbing agent 
that it is found in is a secondary numbing ingredient, blue gel. And it decreases swelling, bruising, and bleeding without the use of epinephrine, which makes blue gel so popular. Now, epinephrine is usually found in up to 5% concentrations, and it works as a topical anesthetic, but is also found in numbing solutions to vasoconstrict or decrease bleeding at the site so that it increases ink retention. If the client is allergic to other numbing agents like the lidocaines, prilocaines, benzocaines, tetracaines that we just talked about, they most likely will have a reaction to epinephrine as well, but you need to check and be very careful because if the client experiences hives or extreme swelling, we need to stop and seek a medical professional. Now, you know the topical anesthetic is working when the client feels vibration or the needle of the needle rather than sharp pinpricks. You know that topical anesthetics are working when the client feels you touching them rather than the sharpness of the microblade. And in this picture, you can see the blanching or white edges around the microbladed area and microshaded area on the client's skin. And that's showing that sodium ions have not been able to enter the skin cell, which is why they have not had the skin sensation of pain that we just talked about. Side effects of numbing agents are important to know about. The client may feel nervous, excited, dizzy, drowsy, or chills. And that can happen just because of the effect of endorphins released during a tattoo procedure. And it's not necessarily a reason to stop, but take note. A client may rarely experience headache, blurred vision, nausea, and vomiting. That is a sign that you should proceed with caution and potentially end the appointment because if the client is having nausea and vomiting, you may not be able to proceed anyway. If the client has ringing in their ears, flushing, which is a red look of the face like they're sweating but they're just lying there, or cardiac arrhythmias, which are palpitations or the sensation that your heart is skipping a beat, you need to stop and have that client seek immediate medical attention. You don't wanna be alone in your shop with this client, especially if they're having a severe reaction to any of the topical numbing agents or other tools or agents that you are using in your shop. An allergic reaction could happen even if the client doesn't have a known allergy, and it usually is a sign of um, allergic reaction when the client has blistering and immediate or severe skin redness, which is shown in this picture as an unusual irritation, some swelling, some pustule, it looks painful. You should assume the client has a reaction if it looks like this suddenly during the procedure and wash the area thoroughly with soap and water. If this doesn't help, the client should seek immediate medical attention because they may need antibiotics, they may need steroids, they may need other treatment that is beyond our scope of practice. But if you can, try to take a photo before the client leaves because you may want to document this in case the client has an unhappy experience with you and you want to be able to prove how they actually left your shop. Now, contraindications to numbing use are any previous reactions or allergies to topical anesthetics, just like the ones we discussed. Or another reason clients should not get a permanent makeup procedure when they are pregnant or breastfeeding is because epinephrines and the lidocaines, uh, benzocaines, prilocaines, tetracaines that we just talked about are FDA pregnancy category C, which means they aren't tested on pregnant women, so there's no known risk to harmful unborn children. So if we're not testing it and we don't know about it, we can't say that it's safe or not. If the client also has little relief from a numbing agent but can tolerate the procedure, we should just get it done because if we overuse or inappropriately combine anesthetics for the procedure, we may harm the client. I'm Nurse Tracy and I wanna thank you for joining me for PMU Nursing School. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the discussion and I can't wait to see what you think about this topic. Have a great day.